Hi everybody, welcome to a new Python tutorial. Today we're going to talk about JSON data in Python. JSON is short for JavaScript Object Notation and it's a lightweight data format that is used for data exchange. It's heavily used in web applications, so you should be comfortable working with it. Luckily, Python already comes with a built-in JSON module that makes working with JSON data very easy. So in this tutorial, we will have a look at how we can encode and decode JSON data with this module. So let's dive into it. And first of all, let's have a look at how JSON data looks. So here I have this example file called example.json. And here we see uh, that JSON data looks very similar to a dictionary. So it consists of several key value pairs. And as values, it can take strings or numbers or booleans or also nested types like here a nested array or a nested dictionary. And we can also have a look at the whole conversion table. And by the way, you can find this on my website python-engineer.com. There you can find written tutorials to all my other video tutorials. And this is how Python is translated to JSON and vice versa. So a dictionary in Python is an object in JSON. List and tuples are an array. A string is a string. Integer, long and float are a number in JSON. True and false are also true and false, but with a lower case. And none is null in JSON. So these are all the conversions you have to know. And let's start working with it. So let's say we have a Python dictionary and want to convert it to a JSON format. And this is also called serialization or encoding. So let's say, let me copy this here. Let's say we have a dictionary called person. And this has a name, an age, a city, a Boolean if it has children and then titles and this is a nested list. And let's say I want to convert this to a JSON object. So first of all, I have to import the JSON module and then I can say if I want to have this in JSON format, I can say person JSON equals and then I use this module and then um, I use json.dump s and then the person. So this will dump our object to a json string. Now if I print this, print our person in json, then I will see that this is now in json format and we can see this for example because false has a lower case. Now I can also specify an indent here and I would recommend setting this indent to 4 and now this has a nicer format. I can also specify different separators and this is a tuple with two values. So here I can specify different separators so instead of a comma here I use a semicolon and the space and instead of a colon and the space here I want to use, uh, let's say, an equal sign in the space. And now if I run this, then we can see the different separators here. But I would not recommend using different separators, but instead use the default ones. Um, but what's also a, a helpful argument here is to use the sort keys argument and set this to true. So by default, this is false. And now if I run this, then we see that our keys are sorted alphabetically. So this is how we can convert from a Python dictionary to a JSON object. And in this case to a string. Um, now I can also convert it or dump it into a file. And for this I can say I open a file, so let's say with open and let's call our file person.json and I want to open it in write mode, open it as file and then I can say json.dump 
not dump s because s stands for our string. I want to dump into a file. So let's dump and I want to dump the person object into our file. So now if I run this, then we see that this file got created in our folder and this contains our JSON data here. So for example, I can also specify the indent here. Let's say indent equals four and run this and have a look at our file again. Then we see that it has not a much nicer format. So this is how you convert from uh, a Python object to JSON data. And let's say we have JSON data and want to convert it back to, to a Python object. And this is called deserialization or decoding. So let's say I have our person in JSON format here and I want to convert it back into a dictionary. Then I will say person equals JSON dot load s. So in this case, I want to load from a string and then I will give it the person JSON and JSON. And now if I print our person again and don't print this, then we will see that now we have a Python dictionary again, because here we can see that false is written with an uppercase. So this is how you convert from a JSON string. And like before, if you want to convert from a, a JSON file, then you use the JSON.load method. So for this, we have to open our file. So we still have our person.json here in our folder. So we say with open and let's open this file person.json. And now we want to open it in read mode as file. And then I want to, I can say person equals JSON dot load from our file. And then I can print this. And if we run this, then we see that this does the same thing. So this is how we can decode JSON data and now, in this case, we uh, worked with a dictionary, but let's say we have a custom object. So let's say we have a custom class. Let's call, let's create a class called user. Um, and our user has two instance uh, variables. So let's say it has a name and an age. So let's say self dot name equals name and self dot age equals age. So now let's create a user object user equals user. And let's say the name max and the age 27. And now let's say I want to have this in JSON format. And like before, I call JSON dot dump s. So dump from a string, um, uh, dump as a string. And I want to dump the user. Now, if I run this, then this will give a very long error here. And at the end, it says type error object of type user is not JSON serializable. So what I have to do, I have to write a custom encoding function and this is not very long. So let's say let's create a function called encode user and this will take a object and inside our function, we check if our object is of with this is instant method. So this will check whether an object is an instance of a class. So let's check if our object is of class user. And if so, then we will return a dictionary with all the instance variables as key value pairs. So let's say it has the 
name and this equals this is our object dot name and then it has the key h with the value object dot h and then as a little trick it will get also the class name as a key so i can say object dot with double underscores class and then dot double underscores name so this will give the name of the class as a string and then as a value the value doesn't matter so i simply put in true and otherwise i will raise a type error so let's raise a type error and as a string or message i will put the same message here so now this is our custom encoding function and now in our dump or dump s method i give it that as a default argument and now here i use this encode user uh, function so this now will use this function for how to encode the object and now if i run this then this worked so now i can print our user.json and now we see that we have our dictionary with the name the age and the user class as key with the value true so this is how you encode a custom object with this default argument and then there's also a second way so you can implement a custom JSON encoder so let's say we import from JSON um, we import the JSON encoder and then we create a class call this user encoder and this is derived from this base JSON encoder and then we override this um, default method so let's say this is called default and this takes self and an object here and then inside we do the same thing so we check if our object is of the class user and then we'll, we will return this dictionary with the class name in it and otherwise we will we let the base JSON encoder handle it so we say return JSON encoder dot default self and object and now in our dump or dump s method I can give it a class argument and as a class now I use the user in encoder and not the base JSON encoder anymore so now if I run this then we see this also worked and as a last option now I can use this encoder directly so I can say user JSON equals user encoder now let's create a user encoder and then I can say dot encode our user and now if I run this then we see this also worked so this is how you encode custom objects now let's say i want to decode our object back let's say i have here our user in json format and i want to have it um, in a normal python object so i can say user equals json dot load s and then I will give this user JSON here. Now if I run this, then this worked. So I can print the user. And now we see we have a dictionary here. So we don't have a user object. So let's check the type of this user. Then we see that this is a dictionary here so for example I cannot call user dot name because it's not a user object but what I have to do if I want to decode this into a user object 
I also have to write a custom decoding method. So let's call this decode um, user. And this will get a dictionary. And now inside this function, we check if our dictionary contains the user key. So now here in, en in our encoding function, we added the user class name as a key. So now and here we check if this key is in our dictionary. So let's say if user dot double underscore name in dictionary and then we will create and return a user object. So let's return a user and as name it will get the name from our dictionary. So name equals dictionary and then the dictionary with the key name and as a age it will get the age of the dictionary. So age equals dictionary of age and otherwise it will simply return the dictionary so then still the decoding will work but it will um, be decoded into a dictionary and now we have to use this um, custom decoding uh, method so we can say in our json.load or json.load s method we can specify an argument that is called object hook and now we set this object hook to our decoding message and now if we run this we see that we have our user object so we can let's print the type of user and then we see that this is now of class user and we can access its instance variables for example user.name and here it prints max. So this is how you decode custom objects and that's all I wanted to show you about working with JSON data. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and see you in the next tutorial where we talk about random numbers in Python.